Crossing fingers. Hello and welcome to season four, episode one of Fabrically Speaking Live. And I'm hoping everything goes well. Yay! I was having audio issues and apparently I fixed it. <laughs> Yay! Hello, everybody. I, um, what can I say? I tried not to have the show, but. Turns out it's uh, it's a part of me now, and maybe I got everything working really well, and, and we'll have a good time doing this every Thursday. Now, today is not Thursday, it's Tuesday, and I tried to go live in the school, and only one person showed up for the Zoom. I don't know, I think it's because everyone gets confused about what time it is when I'm on Zoom and what time I, it is when I'm on YouTube. So the microphone is too loud. Let me turn this down a little so I don't make your speakers buzz. Okay. That's better, right? It's different not hearing you guys talking, but I think are you guys are you guys happy with this with us sticking with fabrically speaking live and I got almost all my buttons working I just don't have the button that switches working I mean it was working yesterday but it's not working today Matt nah, it's not working so one button not working but I can live with that this is what I did in the VIP live for those of you who missed out on the VIP live and are on the VIP, in the VIP group. I'll have the link in there soon. 
I'm trying to get into the chat. Come on. Everything is making me log in again today. <laughs> Switch this. No, so you don't have to see me type my password. Go ahead and chat amongst one another. I know that some of you are were wondering where each other were yesterday. Yeah, today the Zoom was absolutely bizarre. I couldn't I couldn't get it to to stop being live. It took about a half an hour of I kept quitting Zoom and and inside the school it kept showing me live. So if you tried to join the Zoom afterward, that's what was going on. It was malfunctioning and you know, YouTube never let me down. Only my cameras did. So we'll just stick with this and uh, and I confused so many of you the last time. What do you mean that's not a password? My password. Try that again. Oh, come on. Does that make you guys feel better when I have trouble? Oh my gosh, it's making me do the looking for traffic lights thing. Seriously, another group of it. Well, I guess it's better than it being anybody could come in and be me. Oh, now it's motorcycles. Three different ways to prove I'm me. They must have been having trouble with people's chats. Oh my gosh. Why is it doing this? I just was in my account. I wouldn't be live if I weren't using this. So this is weird. Oh my goodness. I'm if I if it doesn't work this time, I'm going to just uh, stick with using my cell phone for looking at the chat. Yeah, forget it. Oh well. I don't get it. I was already in it. So I have the chat over here. It's just itty bitty. For those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine attachments and the Octi Hoops. And I'm going to play around with all of them today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out in the chat. And there's a lot of people in there that have been hanging out with me for a while as this is our fourth season of Fabrically Speaking Live. Fabrically Speaking Live generally is every Thursday at two o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And so today's an off time because I had actually decided not to do the show anymore at a rough 2022 which kind of impacted my spirit. I can't type in the chat right now. Oh, well, everything is going to be all right, right? So for what I have hanging on the wall is a fiber art done in one of the easiest ways by just taking a fabric that you really like and adding different trims and doing some quilting on it. This is the actual fabric that you see there, even though this is all purple and pinks. So when we come down here, you'll see that the colors are what you see up on the wall. So what I recommend is a fabric that doesn't have a solid color because it's more forgiving. And if you have little elements on the fabric that you could quilt around, it's great for practicing your quilting with the Octi Hoops. The Octi Hoops are my free motion frames that make it so that you can... I got a hook down here to hold them. So these are the Octi Hoops. Everybody having a good experience? Do we have good sound and good 
uh, good uh, video, you guys. Thank you, Scarlett. I helped so many people, I don't remember what I did to help you. I know that a lot of you are, in, are utilizing the new chat button, the chat with us button on creativefeet.com. And uh, I'd like you all to know about it. So I'm going to show you my screen. So down here on the bottom right of the screen, you'll see the purple chat with us button. And you click that and I get a text message on my cell phone. So I can help you without going into my email program. It's really nice. So that is it right there. I was sharing the wrong screen. So we have all of the products shown up here on the screen. The OctaHeaps is what this young man is using in this picture. And I'm going to start with that. It's also found under here. You can shop now and go to all of our products grouped in different ways. So this is, uh, I, I don't think I've ever shown you guys this way of shopping. So this is special packages of the Creative Feet to get special deals. And this is just buying the feet separate. So if I go there, the foot that Scarlett was talking about is the satin edge foot. Thank you, Brenda. It's nice to have you back. So apparently you're more active in YouTube than in the school. So each of the creative feet are sold separate. And then we have the accessory guides for the sequins and ribbon foot. And I'm going to probably play around with both of those today. And the adapters come with each of these feet. If you want to buy extra adapters, you can buy them by clicking on that. So back to get out of here. Where's my mouse? Okay. So I have the, this is front. Uh oh, there's music playing. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> so funny. Whose computer is this? I got that playing in lots of places. Sometimes when I have that song, they'll say you or Facebook won't let me play it. And know this, you guys, I can't see you if you're in Facebook right now. It isn't for lack of trying to log into the chat. I don't know why the chat's not working. I'm going to give it one more try just because now I realize I can't see any of the chats coming from Facebook, only YouTube. So if you want, you could jump on over to the YouTube channel. Generally, I'll see your comments afterward and be able to respond to you if you are on Facebook right now. And just know that while I frequently am a little disheveled, today I'm even more disheveled because I was going live in the school, which is createwithclairowley.com. I will have the link in the description below the video afterward. So how I created this was just to take a piece of fabric that I liked that had varying colors and lightness and dark so that whatever I sewed on top would show up maybe not completely show up like this shows up 100 percent. you see the trim you see the stitching this because of all the color variations will kind of hide some of what you're doing not that there'd be any reason to be embarrassed by what you're doing but it is more freeing and easier should you be new to free motion quilting you're more likely to like your project when you're finished if you follow these guidelines you can use this for anything you want. I may use it as a book cover because I really like this fabric and I've had it for several years. So I, I'm going to see if I can find 
something on the salvage for you. I think I got this in 2013. Uh, is there anything on the salvage? No, there is not. Sorry, you guys. But this is a, a printed batik instead of the authentic batiks. So it's generally a little bit less expensive and you can find fabrics like this in just about all of your fabric stores and on Spoonflower. Okay, there goes my phone. Why are you wanting to fall over? So this is a nice little version of that. And what I do is now put batting inside. Time to get itchy. And there is, it's a hypoallergenic batting. It's just that the, the, fl the fuzz flies in the air and lands on me. Maybe because I'm in Arizona. Maybe moister air will keep the batting from doing that as much. I don't know. But this is the Windline 100% bamboo batting. My favorite. And we do have that as part of what's on sale as well at creativefeet.com. Trying to be a little neat and tidy. All right, so got to figure out which is right and which is wrong. And if you can't tell, you can take your fabric and stretch across the grain. And whichever, when you do that, it kind of arches out. The outside has the arch and the inside or the wrong side is the concave. So this is my wrong side. And if you feel as though you need to secure your batting to your fabric, you could use a, a polyester fusible batting if you like. Or you can just take some of our liquid-based glue and apply it to the batting. Do my buttons work for that? Oh, my buttons work for one thing. That's cool. This is the liquid base glue and it comes out in a nice little stream, little dots, so that you can then place it on your batting. That button didn't work. Oh yeah, it did. And you just do a little dot representing a straight pin or a safety pin. So if you were to safety pin your quilts every four inches, well, you just put a dot every four inches and then you don't need the safety pins. And I take and slide my finger very gently across the top of those to just spread it out a little bit. However, you really don't need very much especially on a small project like this, I tend not to even use anything other than just the static cling in the batting to hold these on. I made the batting a little bit off size. Let's see. Isn't it lovely? I really like it. So this is now just spreading my hands out, evening it out. Do that on the back side as well. And as I'm doing this, the batting and the fabric connect with one another and it becomes stuck with just static cling. So you don't need to do the glue. Glue or don't, up to you. Fusible or non-fusible batting, it's up to you. 
Now we're going to, I'm going to start with the lowest part of the project that I had hanging behind me. And that is to do some stitching, quilting designs on here. And we have three different size frames. The one that you choose to go beneath is bigger than the one that goes on top. And there's no clamps or anything to hold these together. You just bring one corner into the corner of the other one and it makes the whole quilt move in all directions. That has to do with the octagon shape, makes it lock in place just because of the angles. To determine which hoop should go on the top, you choose the size that is the closest to your hand in size. So see how much bigger that one is than this? This is a better option for my hands. And the reason you use a shorter or a smaller frame is because you want, I have almost every pair of scissors out. And rotary cutters everywhere. There we go. We're going to move the entire quilt with just our fingers using this little handle that drops into the top of the frame and then you just draw and the whole quilt moves because the frame beneath will help to lift the quilt up so the needle is positioned underneath and you just start to draw if you can't move your fingers and get the needle to go all the way to there then you're more likely to lift your elbows up and lifting your elbows makes it so you're not as, I'm not, sorry, hold on one second while I move my camera size for the front and transition so you can see better. This was a project, another of the, I think this is, yeah, this is actually a video I did up on the site on YouTube. If you want to learn how to quilt, how to bind your quilt with piping. Be sure to check out the video where you see this. And I quilted and then also piped and then stitched all the way around as if it were a quilt. So you can pipe with quilting or quilt binding. You can bind your quilt with piping. And then this is a VIP lesson. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the sewing machine presser foot. If you have a free motion foot on your machine, you're more than welcome to use it. And this would be a good option to have the open toe version of the free motion foot. But one of the most exciting things about the Octi Hoops is that you don't need to use a free motion foot. Loosen and remove the snap on adapter and this will be the bottom of my quilt so I'm going to bring it through and work from the top and come down it really doesn't matter you don't have to worry about starting in the middle and working your way out if you've been taught that you can forget that lesson I got all kinds of stuff out So taking the, the middle size hoop and choosing the bobbin thread, I'm going to use the Deco Bob bobbin thread, which works with just about every weight of thread for free motion and for regular sewing. And Deco Bob comes in little mini king size spools, and it also comes in pre-wound bobbins which is very nice when you're not in the mood to wind up bobbin. Choosing whichever color of bobbin thread you like, and I'm switching only because I've, I'm almost out of the yellow, and I opened this pack at the same time. I haven't, I'm missing another one here. But outside of that, I have not used up any one of these bobbins, and it's been over a year since I opened this pack, so. The reason the bobbins last so long is because the thread is 80 weight. 
and that is a thinner thread. So sorry I can't see your chats, you guys. Hi, Amy. Hi, Wendy. Scarlet and another Wendy. And so we got Wendy Harper and Wendy Maliani. Are you from Hawaii? And Cheryl Wempole from Granbury, Texas. And Brenda Crow. Hi, everybody, she said. And as I fumble to try to find the end of my bobbin, I'll bring up this camera. All right. Lost my bobbin cover for a second. I think this is a really fun color to use for the top since I wanted to use it yesterday and didn't. By the way, those of you who were in the VIP, that, that funny project that I created, I'm using it to sit on. It is a nice seat for underneath, you know, for sitting. So I found a, a use for it. And it's just this, this lumpy or tubey project that I created. So it's kind of like a, a really, really cush seat pad. So yay, I didn't waste time yesterday. In the VIP, I tend to play around and try new things that I've never tried before. And that was one of them. I had this vision of something that I thought might work. And, uh, and in front of everybody live, I do it. And then sometimes I'm a little embarrassed by my projects. But that is part of the creation process. You have to, you have to try it. Have any of you ever designed your own pattern? If you have, give me a thumbs up. So I'm a little higher in my seat today as a result of, of that pad. And I like it because I can kind of form it into the right spot. So I will talk more about it when I create one that's worthy of everyone seeing it. So pink bobbin, lime green, kind of almost a neon green thread on the top. And then just take your fabric and position it beneath. We're going to place the bottom frame underneath and the small frame on top. And then bring in my bolster pillows. I had them all there. The sewing room gremlins must have got in here last night. So I have a bolster pillow pattern and it is available in the school, createwithclairowley.com and uh, for free for you guys to use. And you can create different sizes. So this arm is about an inch and a half shorter than that arm because I had surgery and they, they had to shorten my arm. So I use a thicker one on my left arm than I do on my right arm. And it helps to, to level me while I do free motion. If you've done free motion before and you don't even get the concept of putting your elbows down while doing free motion, you haven't played around with the Opti Hoops yet. And also all three of the creative feet, make it so that you can put your elbows down when you sew. I have too much stuff in front of me. Oh, look, I made it out of the same fabric. <laughs> so elbows down and shoulders relaxed. And then you grab a corner and bring the two corners from the bottom frame and the top frame. You bring those two corners together. You can only bring one corner together at any given time because of the mathematics of it. So any corner at all. And you can start right on the edge. I will switch to a tighter camera in a second for you. And then on my machine, if I try to start sewing, I'm ha I have a straight stitch, the 9014 Super Universal Needle, 
and that is a non-stick needle so it tends to slide in and out of fabric easier and you're less likely to get your bobbin thread coming up to the top but you could use any version of the 9014 thread with a 40 weight polyester on top or you can use the thinner thread on the top so your stitches don't show as much which is better if you're a new quilter so the invisifil thread available at creativefeet.com would be a good thread to start with if you're new and you don't really want to see your stitching that much and so straight stitch and you can lower your feed dogs i'm not going to do so yet so that people who cannot lower their feed dogs see that you can quilt without them and then at some point if i remember i'll drop those feed dogs so stitch length stitch width all of that is irrelevant when you don't have a foot so because there's no presser foot and the quilt is being lifted by the bottom frame the feed dogs cannot interfere with the feeding of the fabric and i become the steerer or the feeder of my fabric so as i try to sew with my machine because it's computerized and i push on the pedal it goes ding ding and you know like reminder that i didn't lower the presser foot bar in this case i have a button that raises the foot as well and then that lever doesn't go up so if you have a regular machine and you drop the feet drop the foot the tension discs close on the thread if you don't lower that the tension discs remain open and then your thread falls to the bottom and creates a real mess on the bottom of your quilt if that's ever happened to you now you know why that happens another reason you can get the looping on the bottom is by not raising the foot when you change thread so doing free motion being aware of the position of your presser foot bar makes your life a lot easier all right elbows down shoulders relax i'm going to do a little bit of stitching and then i'll switch cameras bring up your bobbin thread to the top if you don't do that what will happen is your machine just won't it won't stitch and you'll think what's going on something's wrong with this hoop but it's not it's that you need that bobbin thread brought up for at least the first couple stitches and then you don't need to hold it anymore and you can go ahead and stitch and it will continue or maintain itself whatever that means so you can see my position elbows down shoulders relaxed and decide what you're going to quilt and then start drawing it i have a little tension on the thread because the way i wound this spool back up wasn't good you can also reduce your needle thread tension by one full tension setting so if it's normal at four take it down to three at least for the beginning and see if uh if everything looks good that's generally a good number for me going one number less so this is the one of the issues people have what do i do with my threads now you can take those threads with a hand sewing needle and bring them in between the batting and the top and the bottom fabrics just kind of pull it in and bring your needle out and let the thread just lay inside of there now this is not an award-winning quilt so i'm just gonna cut that thread having tied a knot by sewing a few stitches in place you can you might not be able to see that but know that inside the school i do a lot of close-up photos of any of the lessons that i teach so that you can see after the show elbows down shoulders relax and i decided to do like a little flower this is just a very whimsical design you can also take and look at the elements on the fabric and follow along on the fabric by going around the design that's already on there this is a really good way to learn how to hold the hoop how to hold onto the handle how to use the handle as a pen so when you write with a pen you use your fingers to move the fabric the same process is done with the handle and then by just having one hand grabbing hold of those two frames it makes the whole quilt move together 
elbows down, shoulders relaxed, and continue. Once again, those of you who are on Facebook know that I cannot see your chat today. It wouldn't let me sign into the chat. I really apologize for that, but you can leave messages anyway. And then after the live is over, I'll go in and see if any of you had any questions that needed to be addressed. So as you progress and you want to move around on the quilt, you can actually go all the way off the edge of your quilt. This is a more advanced positioning and I tend to use what's called a scissor hold. I take two fingers and I just kind of a little hold on the fabric, not stretching, but just kind of just, just in case. And then I can actually go right off and you can see the feed dogs are feeding and then I can come back on. And this is right here. This is actually two layers of batting because it's folded over and two layers of fabric and no foot to help hold all of that down. And I'm not having to put my fingers right there. Another really nice thing about the octahoops is you don't have to lift up or push down on your quilt. So your fabric won't get all bunched up on the backside. So as you're working your way down, and this is the same style that I did on that original artwork on the wall behind me that I'll point out from time to time. I, I randomly just went down and when, you know what, I feel like, let's, let's do, let's do a heart. And then I just drew a heart. It was really kind of a fun project because I didn't have any rules to follow. I just went, I'm just going to have fun. And you can actually draw words too. So here I'm writing, so... So if you can write the word so on a piece of paper, you can write it on your quilt. So the trick to doing the fiber art where you're combining different types of trims is that you want to make sure you don't start with the thick, hard trim. So you wouldn't want to have beads already stitched on the fabric first. Do that later. Now I'm going to go ahead and just take the bottom frame and slide it down and then slide this, this frame down and that's how you progress down the quilt. Nothing is actually attached to anything. I also get asked a lot why I don't lower my, my uh, needle when I stop. If you are not raising the foot, the tension is fixed on that actual fabric, even if you move it around. Now, if my if my needle were lowered and I moved the quilt, what would be happening to my needle? So it's actually really a challenge to your needle to have you lower it when doing free motion and stopping like that. Another thing that I don't do that a lot of other educators show you is have your needle stop down I don't recommend that you have your needle stop down because when you do, as you're, if you have a computerized machine, a lot of them, when your needle stops down, as you release your foot off of your foot pedal, it drops into a lower gear and the needle will instantly just slow down really, really slow. And if you're sewing really fast as you release your but then the needle itself can get pulled against the fabric or it will stub its toe. So this is a really fluid, fun, just kind of swirling design with no real rule. Just I'm moving. I have a doodle that I doodle and so I'm doodling it on my quilt and it looks really cool but it is not challenging or difficult. Are you guys able to see the stitching? I have another camera angle for this camera. Let's see if it'll work better. My dog is growling. I was like, what is that sound I'm hearing? 
Chase is Chase is scary. So let's see if this close. It looks blurry. Even though I set the. Um, I really did set this already for focus. I'm a little concerned about this one camera. See if I can't. Set that real quick. Come on. Oh, well, we'll see. It's a lot closer, but Let's see if you can see it. So I'm just, I'm just going up to a point and coming back down and once I get all the way down one row, I'm going to stop and beat anyway. And I can maybe bring that up on another camera. So you have the freedom to just kind of move everything around. That light's so bright. Maybe that's part of it. It's too bright. So one of you is talking about the presser. Oh, did you think I was talking about the pressers and not my presser foot? The pressers. And I don't, I haven't needed this today, but it doesn't mean I won't need it. Look, it kind of matches this fabric. I do tend to like these fabrics. <laughs> It reminds me of a big stick popsicle. As a child, I really like those. You have these hoops, Brenda, and you haven't used them yet? This is a really good way to start. And you can use this, this fabric when you're finished for anything. So I'm going to do a heart. Speaking of hearts, we got Valentine's Day coming up. Would you guys like me to have a project for Valentine's Day? I'm going to be live on the normal day for Fabrically Speaking Live, which is Thursdays at 2 o'clock. So two days from today, I'll be live again. For our regular, regularly scheduled time. Getting a delivery. There we go. So I'm just going to do like one section of this wall hanging so you have an idea of how it was done. I never lowered my feed dogs. For those of you who want to see that you can, I'm going to lower them now. Of all the, of all the products that I've invented, this is my, this is what I like to do when I'm tense or just kind of needing a break from thinking about things. And honestly, I never thought I would ever feel that way <laughs> about free motion quilting because it used to be so hard without the Octi hoops. So if you've got a past with it and and you had a, a stressful time, give it another try and use the Octi hoops and see if you don't find that you feel the same way as I do.
Let me bring it up to the camera so you guys can see what I did. Still just a fuzzy camera today. Maybe the top camera will work better. It's just too whimsical of fabric. See the swirls? Let me try the other camera one more time and we'll switch to the creative feet part of this. Here was a really fun spot. And I just kept echo quilting around. Know that I never thought about my stitch length the whole time because just like you don't drive your car worrying about what, what speed you're going once you kind of know the feeling of the speed. Can you guys see that? If you can, give me a thumbs up so I know that you guys can see it and I'll move on. Imagine a, 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 ho a, a holiday. Imagine a Valentine quilt that you do hearts and then you alternate between all the words that reflect love, like love, care, adore, and you can just do fill up the whole thing with that and maybe make it into a book cover and give it to somebody that you love for Valentine's Day. Well, should we do that on Val next on Thursday? I do have a pattern that I already started drafting. And I was going to use this for my daughter. And then she was like, I don't really want a whole book cover. I just want something that, that holds the pages. So I came up with this. And what you're seeing here is, is my inking. She used it like this and took the, took it and it went, it goes like that on the back of the book. And then when you open it up, you know what page you left off on. This is a book available at Creative Feet right now. This is by Carol Ann Waugh, Stupendous Stitching. I could ink this. I don't know. There's so much to do. So much I could do. Would you like a two-part Valentine project where next week or Thursday I ink this with a Valentine-y concept and I can provide the pattern in the school for you guys and then the next week I quilt it? If you'd like that Tell me in the chat and the more you say things in the chat and the more you like and share, the better I am on YouTube for the YouTube algorithm. That is partly why I was going to stop doing the show because the sh I go too long and then not all of you watch to the end. So it's up to me to not, to not go too long. So I'm going to switch to showing you the next level would be yarn because you can sew through yarn without risk of breaking your needle. If I want to sew through some beads or rhinestones or a heavy cord, then you're more, you're more likely to accidentally strike that with your needle and break your needle. And since, as you can see on this, I crisscrossed over the different trims, it was important that I start with the yarns. And this is a whimsical kind of yarn that is actually a combination or see how many different yarns they've got here. They've got two, four different yarns, all not really strung together. It'd be a challenge to stitch that. If you were trying to position, you know, couch that down on your fabric, and that is what we're going to be doing now, is, is the definition of couching is what? 
you guys know what the definition of couching is? Oh yeah, do that. Does anybody have snow on the ground? If you have snow on the ground, right? Snow. I don't want to waste that area if it's tied in a knot. So if you go into your yarn shops or the yarn department at your discount fabric store, they are now not just for knitting. It's for couching on your quilts. You can also add to ready-made garments or create scarves out of regular fabric and stitch down the yarns and add, make a really creative looking embellishment and our sequins and ribbon foot is the foot that has always been called the couching foot and it has this little tube comes with a quarter inch guide attached to it or in essence the opening is quarter inch and best suited for quarter inch wide trims I need to put my machine snap-on adapter back on. Always, whoops, always tighten your screwdriver or always try and tighten your screw with a screwdriver so it doesn't come loose while you're sewing. If you've ever had your foot come loose when you're sewing, give me a thumbs up. These are the three different guide options for the sequins and ribbon foot. And I look at the yarn and try to decide which of the openings would be the best for this particular yarn at the point where we have these little knots that come out. How big is that? Which one of these should I put this through? This one is the 3 8 inch, this is the quarter inch, and then we have the eighth inch and the round hole for single layers of yarn. Boy, the lighting is really intense. Is it just too bright today? So left, middle, or right, you guys. You're making the Irish chain quilt. I hope you'll share pictures in the school when you're done with that, Scarlett. West Phoenix, 91st, and Camelback. Amy's been watching for too long. <laughs> so we're going to use the eighth inch. Because what you want to do when you choose the right guide for the yarn that you're using is squish it between your fingers and roll it and then how big is that and the eighth inch guide will give me a little bit extra room for these knobs that are sticking out but how do you get all of that into that small opening first i need to change the guide and you do that by just turning the nut. And this is the Creative Feet brand sequins and ribbon foot. And I'm the inventor of it. I invented it when I was 21 years old. You just take and put this into the guide. And then you push it on till you feel that the nut is attaching or starting to thread onto that screw. And then you can flip it around until this clear post goes into that slot and continue. And to get that thick thread into that opening, Amy is correct. We are going to use a piece of thread to do that. 
any old thread will do. Just take and lay it down on your surface. Then lay your yarn across it. And then bring it up like this. And I do prefer thread over all other threading devices. Make sure you cut that thread so that it is nice and clean and take it through. Then as you continue, the yarn will go through and we're now looking at eight different thicknesses going through that opening. And this is the knot that I didn't want to cut off until we got to this point. Because I don't like wasting if I can avoid it. And you just pull it. And it wouldn't be a bad idea at this <laughs> to just kind of tie a little knot before I get started. The most challenging part of yarn is dealing with this. So for those of you who handle yarn a lot, you'll have an easier time than me. You just signed up today? And for those of you who don't know, I'm also a novelist. I just published my first book. And it is called Beyond the Brushstrokes. I'll put the link in the description below the video. The reason I'm mentioning it is because now that I know how to publish, I am going to be producing a lot of different sewing books as well. What's going on with my camera? Here we go. So you guys could tell me of all the things that you enjoy, what would be the first book you'd like to see me do? Would you like one on fiber art? Would you like one on basic sewing? Would you like one on quilting? And I was thinking about doing them like this stupendous stitching book so that they have lots of photos and inspiration. This is similar, and why I'm bringing this up is this is very similar to what I'm doing now, except for Carol Ann Waugh used decorative stitches on the sewing machine. And I'm using, I use free motion stitching instead. And what I did yesterday with the VIP group, that round design, which is out of my reach here. Let's see. Hi, Chase. It's kind of early. Would you like to say hi? Come, come on. You can do it. Come say hi. Up, up. Come on, old man. Get up here. What's the matter? He's, you're too short. You got to get up here. Come on. Up. Oh, up. It's too slippery on the floor. Well, Chase is, uh, he's down here. I can't pick you up. You're too big. <laughs> I must have said something that sounded like his name. So what I did here was decorative stitches, and it takes a long time to do a decorative stitch. But it's a really great way to learn your decorative stitches to do this type of work. Another option. So if you're not ready to do the free motion quilting, you could still do the stitches with the trims and also have some without trim and follow Carol, follow along with this book. So I have the stitch or the trim inside of the 
the middle opening or the left opening on this. And now I need to choose what stitch I want to use for this. I really don't want to cover up all of that because it's so cool. But look at, I don't want to write over the word so. So kind of think ahead a little bit and release the foot pressure on your machine so that you have the ability to swirl around if you feel like swirling around. Hi, Nora Lee. Hi, Charlene. Welcome, you guys. Let's see. This is a fun stitch. It's the couching stitch. <laughs> Go figure. The couching stitch on the baby lock and also brother machines that are made by baby lock or the other way around. The brother machines, brother makes baby lock. So this is 2-09. Oops, I forgot I lowered the feed dogs. So I've raised them back up. And now I, now I get to see where the stitch is falling and it's going to the left of the trim. So I can turn the nut on the foot, moving the trim over. And while a lot of the sewing machine companies have made knockoffs or copies or similar feet to my foot, none of them have these different options, these guides and the ability to adjust them to your needle position. You could also use double needles and triple needles in, com in combination with different ribbons. I'm going to go a little bit wider on the width and longer on the length so it doesn't take as long. And then show you this. I don't need to go that wide. A little bit smaller. 5.5 .5 is my width. Sewing so I can use the creative fabric that you make. So do you uh, do you hand dye fabric, Norley? I was trying to avoid the word so that I wrote. And I succeeded. And since I have like a swirling design that I stitched out, as I mentioned before, the most challenging thing is controlling the yarn. And you could put the yarn through a straw and tape the tape a straw to your machine and have it jet out to the side because the foot does the guiding for you. See how neat that? Oh, you can't really see. I have a dark zone over there. Maybe I need to move this over. That seems better. Is that too much in the shot? It's been about a month since I've gone live like this, so I forgot some things. All right, the yarn is safe. I'm falling you know you can come up and I can come back so I'm just steering my fabric and the, and the yarn follows along even though it's kind of curling or being forced that way it still is pulled and brought to the front of the sewing machine needle and held down so your needle won't lift up the yarn or ribbon, or rickrack, or sequins, or elastic, as this foot is the one foot for all flat trims like that. I feel like going all the way around in a circle. <laughs> if I could just get this ball of yarn to behave. Now this is when free motion is easier, but I've yet to see a free motion foot that is capable of handling four yarns at once. And with a little bit of finagling, the feed dog combination makes it so your stitches are consistent. Something that's harder to achieve in free motion. In case you're wondering why I never did a free motion couching foot, I was behind the development of the of the Glennon machine, and it was just it wasn't worth it compared to what I could achieve with the creative feet. Feet 
See how it's nice and flat, even though I stitched around in a circle without any basting between with these three layers. Sequins and ribbon foot, because of the design of the bottom of the foot, I designed it for a fashion designer so she could sew rows of sequins. Now I'm going to leave this long. And every time I end with a multiple, I always tie a knot so that I don't end up not being able to get them to feed in unison. And isn't this cool? I spent a lot for this. I have a whole box of a variety of different yarns and I spent over $300. I was close to $400 for this box. I bought it at a show from one of the vendors. So if I don't cut that, I can take and bring this up and I can do a finish on the bottom of this and leave this hanging down as an element of the, the fiber art-ish behavior of the entire design, which is what I have on the wall behind me. So on the, on this, you can see a couple dangling. But I did go all the way around and finish with a technique done with our pearls and piping foot, which is what I'm going to show now. I'm going to do a use the pearls and piping foot to put what on? What should we put down? Should I use a cording or should I use some beads? You guys choose what you want me to do. Beads or cording. And this is a rat tail cording. Tell me in the chat, you guys, this is your chance to be, to tell me what to do. <laughs> Looking in my goodies. Oh, I have a feeling I know what color. I'm going to be asked to use, but I have a variety of different colors of the rat tail satin cording. And this is the two millimeter wide, I believe. <laughs> what size is it? One hundred and thirty one point six two millimeters. No, that, that's meters. That's how many yards are, or that's the length of the whole roll. But I believe this would be, this would count as the eighth inch or the two millimeter wide rat tail cording. Should I use purple? <laughs> all right, you all agree on cording. Welcome to Fabricly Speaking Live, the show that almost ended in 2023. But I had a change of heart. I have a good feeling about 2023. I did just celebrate my 60th birthday, you guys. Oh my goodness. When did that happen? I launched this company in my early 20s. It's been a long, long part of my life. Oh, I forgot I accidentally dumped this. Aware, aware is a pearls and piping foot. There it is. So since I have this lime green thread on, it'll contrast beautifully with the purple, as it is a complementary color for purple. The Beyond the Breaststrokes channel will be opening soon as well, and I'm going to be doing artwork on there. So I was like thinking I should do a fabric inking lesson 
and use that in the Beyond the Brushstrokes channel for people who are not interested in painting their own fabric. I will announce when the Beyond the Brushstrokes channel opens. And it does correlate with my novel Beyond the Brushstrokes. All right, so here we go. What I have here is a cord. And all you do is slide it underneath the foot. And the tunnel on the pearls and piping foot, and this is my most copied foot. Every one of the sewing machine companies is copy of this foot. I think the only one that doesn't is ever sewn, unless they finally did. However, all of their tunnel shapes are different than this one. That's what I patented, the shape of the tunnel. And I'm using the shell tuck stitch, which is a stitch similar to a blanket stitch, except for it only has forward moving momentum. So it's going to go stitch and then over and then stitch, stitch over. And it's a very really pretty stitch for cording. So we can, because the cording itself is pretty, you don't want to cover too much of it up. But I can see that my needle is really quite far this way. So I can take the foot off. And this is another feature that our foot has that the rest don't. Is a little washer on the bar that moves the trim over. So that doubles your sewing machine's needle position capability. And there we go. So if you use the blanket stitch, it, it moves forward and reverse and can cause the fabric to start to pucker. If you don't have a shell tuck stitch, a um, blind hem stitch on your machine would yield a similar appearance to this. There. Maybe I just usually have this, this light further over, probably. Just don't remember. Cameras also don't like lights in their eyes, just like we don't like light in our eyes when we look at things. See how much you were missed. You guys don't show up in a live. Everybody who's used to seeing you gets all worried about you. You have a responsibility to the other students to let them know <laughs> that you're that you're okay if you don't show up. Of course, it does help if you know I'm going live, right? Whoopsie, I was looking at the chat. <laughs> So one of the things you, you can't see is that I'm not holding the, the trim at all. Just as I didn't have to with the sequence and ribbon foot. This is what sets us up, apart from all the other copycats. Our feet guide the fabric for you. Of course, we don't want to stitch over it. There we go. And I'm holding the fabric up on the sides and that's how I'm steering. So you can see my, my posture, my elbows are resting and I, I, I should be having these under my elbows. The, one of the reasons you want to put pads under your elbows, does the mic come back on? Yeah, is so that you don't have that strain between your shoulder blades. So if you sew a lot and you feel that pinching between your shoulder blades, like it's uh, called in layers back ache. Anytime you do anything where your arms are up while you're working, it causes that, that strain in, in your back. So these little elbow pads take all that away. And anything that you do, if you're a manicurist, these are great for under your elbows while you paint someone's fingernails and 
if you're a beater or I'm sure you can come up with lots of different crafts. In fact, share one of your non-sewing crafts that you like to do in the chat so everybody else can learn more about you. This is my posture, elbows down, shoulders relaxed, that's the mantra. And then you just steer and the trim goes along with the foot. So you just focus on where you want to sew. And I think, I think I'm going to go, what do I want to do with this? I want to be able to finish the edge. So I'm not, I don't want this to come all the way down. And I can actually now switch stitches and, oh, there's so much I could show you, you guys. But that's what happens. I run too long and then the YouTube algorithm thinks you're not having a good time. So I'm just going to end it there. It's hard to me, for me to end it. And I'll show you what that looks like. Oh, wrong camera. <laughs> Oopsie. There we go. And inside the school, I'll have pictures of all of this real close up shots so you can see as good as I'm able to see with my magnifying glasses on. See the word, the word so? Those are the trims and this is just the single trim. And I didn't do anything with the satin edge foot, which is so unusual to not do something with the satin edge foot. But we will, I think, end it here. So I don't go too long because I'm already, I'm at an hour and 20 minutes. I'm trying to keep Fabrically Speaking live at an hour. We'll see if I can accomplish that. So bye, Amy. Bye, everybody. I, I will remember be live again Thursday, this Thursday at 2 Mountain Standard Time. So just know that Arizona does not change time. <laughs> that sounds funny. We don't change our clocks. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're watching and it is not January 24th, you're probably watching the replay. If you'd like to participate in the VIP classes and, and uh, other live Zoom chats that we do inside of my private school, be sure to join createwithclairowley.com. And I will have all of the links in the description below this video as soon as I am done going live, which I am ending now at 4.23 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you don't know what time it is where I am, simply type into a internet search, what time is it in Arizona? And then you'll know what time it is. I think the reason the Zoom failed today is because people didn't realize that the time you see when you go to a Zoom, it's your time instead of mine. So no one showed up at my time. Well, one person showed up at my time. Right? Windy, right? She was there. She's having trouble with her computer. All of you that are having difficulties with your computers right now, Mercury is in retrograde for whatever that's worth. And I hope that your computer issues are resolved quickly. And that you all have a absolutely wonderful and prosperous 2023. Let's do this together and have some fun every Thursday at 2. Be sure to leave suggestions in the comments below of things you'd like me to cover. Because I have to cover, well, not 52 weeks, not 52 projects. Because I didn't catch all of 2023. So I have at least 50 ideas to have. For every Fabrically Speaking Live show this year. So I need your help. Give me ideas. What is your biggest challenge? What do you want me to show? Push me. Try to see if you can come up with something I can't do. I dare you. And I love you all. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
for spending this time with me and for supporting me as I was flip-flopping and not sure of what I wanted to do. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support all these 34 years and uh, look forward to seeing you in the school. Don't hesitate to ask questions. That's why I built the school and it is free for you to join. Don't hesitate to join. Love you all. Bye.